One of the reasons I fell in love with Elixir is pattern matching and how it can be extensively used all over the code. Let's start the interactive Elixir console and let's do what it seems to be a normal assignment, uh, x equal to 1. In this way, the variable x is bound to the value, the number 1, using what is called the match operator. So this equal symbol, it actually does more than just assigning the value. It tries to match the right part to the left part. 1 equal to x is a valid expression, since uh, these two values are matching. We can write also 1 equal to 1, and if the two values uh, don't match, we have a match error. If we write obviously 2 equal to x, we have another match error, since uh, x is equal to 1. We can rebind the variable with another value, so like in this case, x equal to 2, and, and now the right part matches the left part. Let's see something a bit more interesting. So let's consider a tuple of three elements, uh, one, two, three. And we want to bind a variable to each element. So we use pattern matching for this. We see how the variable x, y and z uh, now they they have they are equal to uh, one two three. If we try to match two different uh, tuples, uh, like for example the one on the left to this one on the right, so the one on the left has uh, three elements and uh, the one of on the right has uh, four elements. These two values obviously can't match. We can also specify uh, one value here along with the uh, with the variables so, so in this way we force this has to match so the first element has to match with the first element uh, of the uh, tuple on the right and in this case they uh, these two tuples uh, obviously uh, match but if for example here uh, the number is two they can't match when a variable is bound to a value and we don't want to rebind it during a match, we can use the pin operator. So the variable, uh, our variable x equal to 1, and uh, we use the pin operator to force this variable to stay, uh, to hold its value. Z equal to 1, 20, 30. So this match, since this is one, but for example, if we want, if we change this one to 10, this doesn't match because X uh, is one. So this is actually like doing this. Pattern matching can be also useful when we want to check if a function returns successfully. Like the file open function, we use to open a file, hello.txt, uh, with the write option, so the file is created if it doesn't exist. In this case, it returns successfully and it matches the OK atom. What happens uh, if we try to open the file in a directory that doesn't exist? So for example, uh, invalid directory hello we see that the function uh, returns uh, a tuple with the first element is an error atom and uh, obviously it doesn't match uh, the okay atom here with pattern matching uh, we can be really explicit about the cases we want to handle we know that the file open function returns a tuple of two elements. The first element uh, is an atom. And uh, when the file is open correctly, the atom uh, is OK. So uh, we write the file, we write into the file uh, a string, in this case, hello world, and we close the file. In the case of an error, the, this tuple is matched and uh, the error is uh, printed. When we want to ignore a part of the, uh, of the tuple in, in the match, 
uh, we just use the underscore. So in this way, we say uh, to Elixir to match only the uh, error atom and this part uh, will be ignored and no variable is bound uh, with the second element of the tuple. So in this case, we say just error opening the file. So it's easy to verify, for example, this tuple of three elements and the third element uh, uh, is the underscore symbol. And uh, in this case, we have one, two, three. So you can see this can be any number, uh, any element actually, and uh, uh, this is going to ignore um, uh, this element uh, and uh, the uh, value here is not bound to any a variable. We can also use pattern matching with other data structures. Let's do what we did with tuples, but this time we use the lists. So we have a list of three elements and we want to pattern match with this list on the left. And we have a variable as a second element. So we extracted the number two, binding the B variable to it. The cool thing is that we can pattern match uh, um, a list like the one we used uh, just before and we split we can split the head from the tail so the first element is the head and the rest is the tail so we can do head tail with this pipe symbol and in this way the head you see is the first element and the tail is a list containing the rest of the elements. This is pretty useful when we want to uh, go through a list uh, of elements uh, recursively. We define an example module with a function uh, called the next element. The only argument of the function uh, is a, uh, a list. So we pattern match the head and the tail and in this way, what we do is to just bring the head uh, element uh, and uh, the rest of the list, which is the tail. And we recursively call the, the function, the same function, next element, passing just only the tail. So in this way, we go through all the list. So head is at first uh, one and the tail is two, three, four, five and uh, the second time this head is uh, two and this is three four five and at the end the tail will be uh, just an empty list so we match an empty list here and we print uh, the uh, finished message so let's see how it works example next element uh, and our list is one two three four five so you see that we so the head uh, and the tail two three four five two three four five so recursively we are able to extract the head every time and we end with an empty list and we finish uh, the recursion we can obviously use pattern matching uh, with maps and maps uh, usually represent the answer a json answer uh, from an api like this case we have received two answers, uh, Ethereum with a price, which is a number, and uh, uh, Bitcoin uh, with another value. So we want to extract these two values and also to handle these two cases in two different ways. So we implemented the process function to process the, all the responses we received from the API. And you see that uh, using pattern matching is really easy to define different cases. Like for example, this first uh, case, uh, we handle the BTC uh, response uh, and uh, we extract the amount and we print it here. Uh, same thing for example for Ethereum and it would be really easy to handle uh, another case uh, uh, for example uh, Litecoin so LTC Litecoin uh, LTC LTC so we could have also we could use um, the uh, symbol we saw before uh, the uh, underscore to handle all the other uh, all the other cases um, so any other response
So if we use our process function with Ethereum data, you see that it, the Ethereum is correctly uh, extracted and printed and same thing with BTC data. So if we pass another, for example, an empty uh, map or uh, like uh, another key hello, since our argument here doesn't match any of the maps we've listed here, it tends to be processed by uh, the catch-all uh, version of our process function, which prints uh, the, uh, any other response message. There are obviously many other ways of using pattern matching with Elixir. Uh, this was just an intro and uh, we will see other ways of using pattern matching uh, with binaries and structs in uh, uh, next episodes. Leave a comment below to tell me how you find the pattern matching uh, in Elixir and uh, if you started to use pattern matching in your code. If you have any question, please leave a comment and subscribe to receive updates uh, on uh, new episodes.